Hi, this is Michelangelo Badio, and this is another episode of No Boundaries, my weekly live multi-stream. It's being multi-streamed on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, and uh, that way we can, when you go and look at it again, if you go to YouTube, we can store a much higher definition uh, quality of video than what we used to be able to do transferring it from Facebook to YouTube because uh, Facebook doesn't allow uh, high definition uh, downloads of this. I just want to say, let's read off the uh, hellos. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? JD, hello. It is cold outside in Chicago. Uh, Hey, Denny, how are you? Uh, Roxana, James, Johnny, Brett, um, so many uh, people that I know personally, you know, they're just, they're not really just fans, they're friends. Uh, so who else? Let's see. Tanya, Alexis, Anthony. Um, I don't know if Nick is here. I see John. Uh, let's see. Sean, uh, Sasha. I said Roxanne. Oh, there's Nick. Hey, yeah, this is uh, one of the guitars that I'm playing today is uh this is uh, w- not one of my signatures, but I just received this from Sawtooth. This is called a Trans Moss Burst with a T-style pickup configuration. Now, in other words, like kind of a telly style, uh, but this is not a lipstick pickup. It's just a single coil, and it sounds... You know, it sounds really good. And then the clean channel... It's just got that twang to it. and uh, But I really like this guitar a lot. And look at the wood on this bad boy. I mean, this wood is really killer. But you know what's really great about it? The price. I mean, the price is amazing on this guitar. And it is very, very reasonably priced, even the, in these times of super high inflation. Uh, Sawtooth just knows how to do it. Now I'm going to make sure this is nice and in tune, which it is. And then talk about the subject matter today. Sweet picking! Joey loves sweet picking. So does Robert. See, the thing that Robert likes about it is it's you're just flying on the guitar, but the actual pick is not moving. It's like... So Joey's like, yes, yes, I will. I'm a god. I'm a finger hand god. And Robert's like... So... And what I mean by that is it's just cruising right along. So, and what I found out, Doug Marks and I, Doug Marks from Metal Method, we did a study uh, about a month ago about people's quickness. You know, how fast can they play 16th notes? And what we found was something I was actually kind of, uh, oh, somebody says a sawtooth uh, going to make a T-style guitar. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Um, Yeah, and this has got... A Wilkinson trum, Trevor Wilkinson makes great trums. I know him uh, personally, but it's a Wilkinson trum. I didn't use the bar on this today. I actually forgot to put it in. I just got the guitar. Oh, no! But uh, we're not going to wang out today. This is not a wang day. And so it's also got Wilkinson tuners. Because we want to talk about sweep technique. And if you can do dive bombers playing a sweep, I don't think it would sound going to be like, Wah! you know, so, but here's, let me show you, I thought about this. Um, you know, I've talked about sweep picking many times, but a lot of people still don't grasp the concept. And, and it's, and, and even if they do grasp it, they can't perform it. They can't do it. And so I thought to myself, how to bake, uh, how to break down sweep technique, sweep picking into the most basic form and I figured it out it's something that I did see when I started uh, doing sweeps and arpeggios I had nobody to show me this because we were kind of at that time in the 80s boldly going so something like this even in the past when people used arpeggios they didn't play that quote modern arpeggio sound that started in the 80s and then now you know there's so many different variations so let me show you what I think the best way, if you're having problems 
getting the mechanics of sweep picking. First of all, what is sweep picking? You literally sweep your plectrum, your picking hand, across the strings. Now it can be two strings, three strings, four, five, six. You have a extended range guitar, seven string, eight string. And so you can get two string arpeggios. Three string, four string, five string, six. So you can do anything with our with these sweeps on any string configuration. Um, you know, it'd be you can't really sweep one string, but two or more, fair game. Now here is what I want to show you. The one of the most basic songs you can learn that has sweep technique because remember, sweep is think about sweeping the floor. I can't do that. I'm a rock hand god. Shut up. And so, but literally, you know, I used to call them rake techniques because we didn't know the terminology. And no, there was nobody showing this uh when I when I was coming up in the scene in the 80s. So we had to boldly go and create. We, we didn't, you know, I'm not saying I invented all this stuff. I, I'm not that arrogant to say this. But what we did is we took, we were boldly going to to find out what a guitar was capable of, to add keyboard passages. Because, see, that's the real reason that I wanted to use sweep technique because I could play an arpeggio on a piano, but how do you do that on guitar? And I didn't see that on guitar, especially in rock. I mean, you know, those early days... Very basic blues rush. I love it. It sounds great. But it's... You know, they weren't shredding to the maximum degree. And so when I started doing sweep technique, I used to call them rakes because it reminded me of like raking leaves. I live in the Chicago area. You know, I grew up in Chicago. A lot of trees. And when it gets cold, the leaves fall off the trees. So you got these naked trees in the weird time. So you got to rake up the leaves. So, and uh, if somebody does, I don't do it anymore. We have a service to do that now. Don't think I'm arrogant about it. But I ain't going to be walking around going like this. Plus, it doesn't feel good on the arms or anything. My hands feel good. And I want to keep them that way. And my arms feel good. And so here's what I did. And like I said, one of the most basic songs... House of the Rising Sun. See, they went. Now, what I did is I, I took it a little differently. I said, and, and I made a joke about this way back in the day. I found the very kind, gentle arpeggio. And so here's what I did. Instead of going... I was too metal to go. Oh, I feel like a rock god. I couldn't do it. I was like, a metal. Metal doesn't play like that. And so what I did was this. See, I just used one chord. Watch. So when you are starting sweep technique, take a minor chord. And then go... So watch, and now watch what I can do. If you go. And let all the strings ring. It's the easiest way to start your way to getting to understand and play sweep picking. And so here's what I did. Now, I didn't just go like this. But see, I started going. I started thinking, how the heck can I pull this off? Like, I wanted to learn how to play arpeggios. You know, I it was just, you know, it's like a lot of like-minded people. You know, I came up in the same era as Ingve and Paul Gilbert and all the great guitar players of the 80s, and we were really pushing the envelope like they're pushing it today. I love today's guitar playing. Um, they're doing all the right things. You know, I mean, I study jazz. A lot of young people are studying jazz. They're tapping more than ever. They're finding unique ways to express themselves on an instrument that has limitless ways of expression. I mean, if you think about it, guitar can do anything. And no instrument on this planet 
has the capability and the, and the variations that a guitar has. No other instrument. None. A flute, you know, a, a piano, you know, it doesn't. Piano comes close because you have those synthesized sounds, but it depends what kind of pick you have, what your fingers feel like, how they hit the strings, what pickup configurations, the guitar, your amp. There are so many variables, and that's why, you know, I always used to say, I can pick up this guitar, which I am, and play it. And then another guitar player could pick it up and, and sound completely different on the same rig because once you add in all the gear, then it comes down to here. And so, I mean, does a, I, I, and I love any instrument. Anything that can make a musical note, I'm all for. But does a, can a violin do tap? Can you, can you beat it like percussion? Can you, do you have acoustic and electric violin? Yes, but there's not much of a difference. You know, electric violin starts to sound like an electrified guitar after a while. And so it's such an amazing instrument, but it comes down to this with sweet technique. If you want to, uh, wait, somebody wrote. Oh, somebody is writing something. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway. I was just looking at some uh, posts here and got sidetracked for a second. But here is what I can tell you about practicing this. Take a minor chord, A minor. And our, when you arpeggiate a chord, it means you are it's a broken chord. In other words, a major chord. If I arpeggiate that chord. And so sweep technique is really great at using it for arpeggiating chords. And also, sweep picking and economy picking run hand in hand. If you can start to do sweep picking really good, your economy picking will definitely improve. And I use economy picking a lot. Uh, I mix it with alternate. I never used to when I was younger. It was all alternate. It was the age of steel, like in Conan the, Bar in the Barbarian. Conan the Barbarian, the age of steel. But then as I got older, I broadened how I played and I incorporated a lot more like I do now. Um, economy picking, also one of the things that's really reminiscent of my style now is just go, I'll stop. I use pauses to much greater effect. In fact, people get jolted by this sometimes. I go, and then just stop. They're like, well, can me stop, dude? Like, just they sustain it, bro. But yeah, I do sometimes, but I like that pause. And it comes with maturity. It comes with just, you know, over over time, you know, you change and you'd like to think you evolve and become, you know, I like to think I'm a better player now than I was a year ago or 10 years ago. So here is what's going on with this. Take this minor chord and just go like this. Now, here's one thing that pros do. It's not just do 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 do. They use a finesse. It's like like when I do this. Now we have a clean sound, so there's no hiding. What? See? See, I go do do do. I accent those top notes, so it's not just like. See, it sounds kind of lame to me, like that, like. And I move my head in the rock metal way, so. See, all you want is to make sure point A and point B are in time. And then there, there's a phrase in music called rubato. And rubato means to stretch a measure or stretch notes. So instead of going. So um, what's going on here? Oh, is somebody going crazy online? Okay, yeah, thanks. It's too bad, you know. Um, you know, when people do that, uh, you know, I don't like to talk about, uh, you know, like like people saying bad remarks, but it doesn't affect my life, you know. It, it doesn't change anything that I do. I just want you guys to know this, seriously. You know, I can read a comment, oh, Angelo does this, oh, video, oh, you should look like, you know, you shouldn't try to, to look rock. Now, tell that to Jeff Beck. Tell it to Alice Cooper. Tell it to Paul Stanley. These... And, and also, too, I, love, I would love 
to see these people that that make all these comments about how other people look post your picture bro i've seen i used to do it see i'm really good on my feet i mean i mean i'm really quick on my feet when it comes to retorts and so when i read this stuff immediately i can do a really nasty comment back just in my head because i've had 30 years of public speaking i'm quick when people say stuff to me but i i reserve that and, and I'm known and I'm checked and I'm verified. So I can't respond back to people. But it doesn't matter. See, that's the thing. Those people, have, they don't want to learn. If you don't want to learn, hey, fine. That's one less person I have to worry about. Joey's like, good. I hope a bunch of people criticize it. Why? Because I'm practicing. I'm ripping. Exactly. You don't have to worry about those people. You have to worry about the people like me. I don't criticize. I play. I don't talk about it. I sing. I don't sit there and brag about it. I do. That's the difference. And I, I'm here to help. See, I genuinely want to help you. And so if you don't want to listen, fine, don't. I don't care. It's not changing anything in my life. I got a nice, beautiful house. I got, so, and, and I don't mean to rant and rave about this, but it's, it gets to the point where it's like, why? What's wrong with these people? You know, just if you don't want to learn, don't learn. Fine, be whatever you want to be, you know, I could never see mm -hmm. criticizing another person online. Why? What is it? What does it make do for me? Nothing. It just puts negativity out there. I'm positive. Now let's get back to the arpeggio. When you do this, watch. All six strings. And now watch this. What I did is I added my fourth finger, played E minor like this, and go like. So I hammered on here, and I pull off here. Now here's what I did. So what you can do, it's a very simple way to get the motion because I, I didn't realize this, and Doug and I were talking about this from Metal Method. We didn't realize in the grand scheme of things that you might understand the idea, but it's the execution of the idea. It's to make it work for you. And so, you know, it's easy to say, here is the, the granddaddy of our arpeggios. <laughs> But I'm an elitist, so I don't use that arpeggio because it's been around a long time, and I, I think it's just very basic and shut up. And so it is a technique. What you use it for is entirely up to you, but it's my phrase that I've used forever. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And so, and that's why I said, if you want to learn, you know, my Metal Method programs are amazing, and I'll talk a little bit about Metal Method did a, a, a huge update to their site. But my programs are awesome, you know, because, I, I, like I said, I spent years studying music in school. I studied classical harmony. I have a degree in music, which I've said a number of times, and it's not to be cool, but I have an extensive background in this. I know how people trained centuries ago on piano i showed you the books well i applied that methodology to guitar but see sweeps were so new see on piano it's easy to, to to write out an arpeggio but see really what i wanted to do is emulate piano techniques and i couldn't do it you know, i'm like how do these how can you go you know all, all you know all we knew how to like you know and that's um, you know, it doesn't have that piano sound, but to do an arpeggio, that's where you get it. But I found this out. And like I was saying, when Doug and I did the study, we didn't realize that a lot of people had problems with just the basic motion of sweet picking. This is the most basic you can get. This is starting in the alphabet on the letter A. <laughs> Take and see, let the strings sustain because when you start using techniques like this, 
you start to block strings. So this is a step up from just this. But take that A minor chord. It's really easy to do, but it's not easy for everybody. And this is something I didn't realize. You know, because I, you know, I'm just riffing out and, you know, my mind has been like this for so long that you sometimes forget and I'm here to help and I'm here to try to teach you and I realized that even what I consider basic is not always a motion that's basic for everybody and I had a lot of jazz players recently contact me uh you know because I did that jazz progressions uh uh program and uh through metal method and I talked about it and they said well can you use sweeping in jazz and here's the thing that I see with a lot of young players um there's a, a, a really great young gis, gypsy jazz player. His first name is Yosho. Really cool looking guy from Germany. And, and uh, I watched him in concert and, you know, he knew me and, and he was amazing. But the thing that I loved about the young players today, they have the same mindset as me, that they'll use anything. And so you've got Yosho playing Django Reinhardt, but he's sweeping. He's doing modern techniques and applying it to jazz, to, and gypsy jazz is its own little genre of jazz, kind of like technical death metal. And so um, that's, but it starts somewhere, and you cannot get more basic, even more basic than this. Go like this. Then add, then play it with bar, and then use your second and third finger instead of going forth. Hammer on on the sixth string, so five to eight. Then you go. Then you go back down. And so you start to develop. You start to develop a flow. Because your picking hand, the hardest part to grasp about arpeggios is your picking hand is actually, and Robert can attest to this, slow. But your fretboard hand, Joe, is like, yes, yes, faster, faster, speed. And so you have. Uh, something skill jump between shred sweep. Okay, somebody has to demonstrate that. Okay, so that. And there's a flow. It's a groove. And so, like, even this is a groove. See, then you can try it with distortion, like. It's too kind and gentle for me. So, this is what I said. Once I got this down and I wrote, like, a kind of a solo section for my solo guitar solo in concert, I said. That's like too metal, bro. Like, I need to shred, bro. Like, I'm metal, dude. I know. So how's the rising sun, bro? And so when I when I started doing this. I said, that's metal! Yes, I feel the power. And so what I started to do is to take this idea. See, but my now my picking hand and my fretboard hand were in sync because that's what you want to do. It's so simple. get a groove because everything in music revolves around feel timing tempo and, and so what you want to do when you play this i highly recommend drum software or even if you just have an old school metronome just set it so you can go then you turn it off and you work on the mechanism can't get more basic than this. You have to understand your fretboard hand is going to be moving a lot faster than your picking hand 
And that's the hardest part because you're literally going when you get more shred style stuff. Now then you can start doing like the three notes for sure. Now I've demonstrated this before. Rainforest. And so, but do you hear how clean those sweeps are? That... And so this is why it is so clean because I isolate it and there's no substitute for practice. I wish I could say there was, but if you practice it correctly and start from the letter A, I always use this metaphor or analogy. See, a lot of times there's so many great lessons out there. And look at, like I said, anybody who's teaching, teaching to me is one of the most noble things uh, that you can do to share information. I've dedicated my life to, sh to sharing information to help the guitar community advance. My whole goal in life, teaching. And see, once I moved out to L.A. in the 80s and then got in the band Howl and then Nitro, I never taught privately again. But even when I did teach privately, I'm working with a good friend of mine, Adam, that's running the video right now. He was my former student. He rips. In fact, he's been on the show. He's going to come on again. And But I genuinely wanted to help. And like I've said it before, it doesn't just help you, it helps me. If I can understand what I do, I'm living proof that, that as you get older, your skills do not have to deteriorate. Listen to my voice. I still have a young voice because I didn't drink too much. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke cigarettes. I'm not saying I'm a saint. I'm not. I'm not a role model. I just live the way I, you know, I feel like, you know, you've got one body. Take care of it. Why? Put oil in the car. You know what I mean? How many people don't put oil in the car? Well, sure. Blow out your engine. You know, sure. You know, change your windshield wipers, bro. Like you can't even see. In wintertime, I just got new windshield wipers. I lease cars because I don't drive that much. But the point is this. If you take care of yourself and you do it right, you do it right from the bottom from the very, you don't build a house from the roof down. You build it from the ground up. I start from the ground level, and I've always done that. And that's why my lessons are still so good. That's what the classical masters did. And, you know, I hear it like there's a lot of great teachers out there, and they like to always say, well, you always want to incorporate it in music. That's not true. That's not the way piano was taught uh, to the great classical masters. What they did was they had books that were specifically designed for techniques. So you separated the technique and the music. See, that's what people don't understand. Like, they'll sh I'll show a, a riff, and somebody go, then this is it. David Gilmore, you can play like more feeling. You want to know. Great! I love it! Who cares? He wrote Comfortably Numb. He played an amazing solo. I love David Gilmore. That's not the point. The point is people who are musical will find a way to make music. Simple. So when what the, what the people of the past, what the teachers and the great artists of the past realize is that if you focus on technique and then you focus on songs separately, that technique, because of your re really, you know, given uh, musicality, will merge itself together. The, the one thing people want to do is if they've learned something new, they want to use it. And where do you use it if you're a musician? In a song. Okay? So you don't have to think technique has to be part of a song. That's, that can be done. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can think of it separately because if you are musical, you will find a way to merge that together. It's the way it happens. And so I did this. And a lot of times people can't understand this methodology. So they're quick to comment. Fine, comment. Do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm here today. Okay? And, and I'm telling you this, and my skills are still razor sharp. Because I know and studied from people before me, the way before I was born, that were smarter than I was. And I looked at how it was done over the centuries that's the difference. And so just, and I didn't realize, like I said, with Doug and I, we were talking about this. I didn't realize 
how basic I had to get in some of this stuff. But then I, I thought to myself, if I can, I taught myself how to sweep pick. And I did it the same way I'm teaching you. This is the first thing, you know, House of the Rising Sun. I love that song. You know, Eric Burden just sang like amazing on that. But that's not what I did. I went. I actually sat down in the early 80s and said, what is the easy, how do I emulate a piano? But do you hear how the notes ring out? And you can hear all six strings. Start this way. Just go like this. And if you have a click track, one, two, three, four, like. And it's like. And see, you finesse it a little bit. What I do is I kind of push the top, like. So, and then you can add this. I think I worked on alternate picking. I just went. This is the one I worked on this all day. I was like. I actually told my mom I was sick. I went like, Mom, I'm dying. I can't go to school today. And then what I did is I, you know, they had those old fashioned heaters because I grew up in Chicago. 75 below zero in winter time. It's a heat wave, dude. And so I stuck my head by the heater. I'm frying. I'm sweating. I'm like, and then I go, Mom, I'm sick. She feels right. Oh, my God, son, you have a fever. Yes, Mom. I'm sick. <laughs> and then she goes to work. I'm like, thank you, mother. And then I got in my room, but I'm, I'm alone in the house. My parents are scared. <laughs> I was like an angry dog. I just worked on alternate picking. And what I did was, it was like a musical epiphany. I realized sometimes I went down, up, down, down. Not down, up, down, up, down, up. Not alternate. And when I realized that, I played this thousands of times. I just kept going over and over like a... And with the uh, bridge position pickup. And then if you use the neck position. And see, now it's down so fluidly because I caught my mistake. See, I would do it right, then I would do it wrong. I'm like, why am I doing this wrong? What am I doing wrong? And then I found out. I was like, I was going insane. And here my mom thinks I'm sick. I'm at home going. <laughs> I'm just practicing like a madman in my room. I had my amp, my guitar, my curly Q chord from, from the old days. And so and, but I went down, up, down, down. That's where I screwed up. Instead of down, up, down, up, down. See, down, up, down. Alternate down, up, down, up, just like this. I was going down, up, down, down. So like, I didn't realize it. And once I did, that was, that was the moment that I was able to grasp alternate picking and master it. And it's the same thing with sweep technique. When you do it slow, if you can't do this, then you know you've got to work on it because you can't really progress unless you're... And see, that is the key to it. Now, my metal method programs show all sorts of... For example, like when you get more advanced, you know, I showed you the three strings, which are... Now, here's a five string. Six string. I use all of them. And I love three strings, five strings, six strings. And the five string is really amazing because you can play it here. Or like this. And then there's so many other techniques that, uh, I mean, 
You know, there's tapping like a, like a, you do. There's just so many ways to play uh, arpeggios, but sweep picking is amazing. Start off with this technique. Then also look at the Speed Kills programs. I show three strings, five strings, all sorts of different ways. No boundaries is an exercise in sweet picking. And see, when you start to get good at it, then you can finesse it. Like when you hear people like Jeff Loomis, who's great at sweeping, uh, you know, myself, uh, John Petrucci, they, they, they do things like this. See, they get that... It's, it's a finesse at the top. It's like a whip. Like. And then. They can get crazy. Start playing them over the neck. Uh, let's see. Remember this fast. Oh, uh, Zach Wild. I, I, I saw Zach Wild's name. Oh, okay. I'm, Adam uh, brought two questions to mind that are real important. Um, one of them is the pick angle. Does that matter? And the other one is the string height, correct? I do not use really low action. I never have. And now a lot of younger players, I found this out. Like, you know, see how I sit like a classical guitarist? <laughs> Well, a lot of young players will not sit like this. Why? Because people my age did it. So they'll be like this. And, you know, I like this better. I mean, it worked for Andre Segovia. It's worked for classical guitarists for, you know, a century and a half. Uh, and, and I like it because you can do this. Whoops. Yeah, you can hit the microphone when you stand up. That's what you can do. And so, but when you stand up, it's the same. Whereas this, who plays like this in concert? You know, so, but it's comfortable. Like I watch Joe Pass. You know, I, I do it too sometimes. Like I'll just sit there like. But getting to the question, pick angle doesn't really matter that much as long as it's angled. I have a cool word for you. I've used this before. Chiff. Chiff. It just sounds, chiff. Sounds mean. What is chiff? Check this one out. When I studied music one of my professors in college at northeastern university a doctor was in world war ii you know i went to college a long time ago and what he did was he visited all the churches he could find especially that johann sebastian bach like when you go to germany and austria and and so he he had gone to churches to to see where bach actually played a pipe organ has a see tone has different elements. For example, there the initial attack, then the, the sound, then the release of that attack, then the decay. So when you see old fashioned synthesizers, they used they used to have like this A, like A D R S A R S D. What it meant is that that same idea. The attack, the sustain of the note. See, when you push air into a pipe for a pipe organ, that's the attack. That is chiff. The initial attack is called chiff. Then you have the air that's already in the pipe that creates the tone. Then you have the release of that air and the decay. So these are the elements of sound of a note. Now it carries over into guitar. You have the attack, you have the note, it's released and then it's decayed. So once I release that tone, it's going to decay. So it, it follows this rule. Now here's what I can tell you about an angle of the pick. If you play parallel to the strings, you're creating a big problem for yourself because a, a guitar pick really doesn't want to be parallel to the string. It's not natural. So it doesn't matter if you have your hands on a guitar like me, John Petrucci, Ingve, millions of guitar players and a lot of famous ones or off like Joe Bonamassa, Al Di Miola, John McLaughlin, the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, you know, even uh, like Rick Beato, he'll put, like uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, that's a 
that's with my hands off the guitar but I'm so good at with my fingers on I can play pretty much anything I want so here's the moral of the story as long as your pick is angled either downward or upward you're fine you have to create chiff and that chiff is the sound of the pick attacking the string and so once you get that it's going to be on an angle all the great guitars all of them have some kind of angle see when you overanalyze what the angle is that is paralysis through analysis it doesn't matter what your angle is it can even be really severe although i wouldn't recommend it but just make sure your pick is angled either downward or upward that's one two action action is subjective meaning it's up to you i like higher action for one reason i get a better sound um, you know, people always say, well, MAB gets, you know, his tone all the time. Well, that's because my action. It's because the action is high enough so it doesn't fret out, meaning it doesn't buzz. Now, it's only me. Now, I do something weird. I actually, I don't set up my own guitars. I learned a long time ago that I defer. I, 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 the thing that's made me so successful is I know my limitations. I'm not a guitar luthier. I've tried. I, I'm not good at it. I bring it to people who are much better at it than me. Adam is a great guitarist. He's here, but he's also great with computers. So I don't need to know this because he knows it. So, you know, I'd rather work on the arpeggio of death, doom, mayhem, and destruction and let other people do their job so I don't have to think about this stuff. Just like I'm a good artist, but I don't want to learn all the art programs because it's not my area of expertise. There's other people that do it much better than me, but I have the vision in my head, just like the song Hurt. You know, um, I, I didn't mention this before, but a lot of big magazines are picking up on my version of Hurt. Uh, you have a harm, uh, Ultimate Guitar. They have a million people. Uh, what, what is the other one? What did I say, Adam? Music? What was it called again? Music Radar. Yeah, Music Radar. They picked up on it. And we don't even have a publicist working the song. The song will be out everywhere very soon, like iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. It'll be out very, very soon. Uh, the audio version, but... I hurt is my own, you know, I love the Nine Inch Nails version. Trent Reznor obviously wrote the song, but I love Johnny Cash's version. And so what I did is I tried to merge the two. And what we did was this. This is how simple this arrangement is. One acoustic, one voice, one bass, one drums, and two keyboard parts. Bill, the bass player, he's brilliant. Guys, he was a member of Mensa. Guy's genius, and, and he's you know this. He was a stockbroker. I, I hang out with some really cool people, and, and I, I really love my friends. And uh, we're all really close, and we've worked together for a long time. And we're, we worked in bands together since like Rob and I, the drummer, since we were 18 years old. And and Bill and I were and Rob were in a band together called Freeze in my early 20s. I was still going to college when I was in this band Freeze with Bill, the bass player, and he looked totally rocked out back then. And and you know now he's retired. He was a CEO of a billion dollar corporation, but he's a great musician. He's a great artist. And listen to the bass. The bass is all these inversions, one bass, and I played keyboard pads, and Bill added his keyboard. So that's all we have. And in the guitar solo section, but it starts off really slow. Then we speed up the tempo, and Rob comes in. Doo -doo, doo -doo, boo -boo -boo. It's like, almost like Phil Collins. I mean, it's so tasteful. And he's playing. It's perfectly in the groove. And he does this feel like, doo doo, doo doo. It's what he doesn't play that makes it so cool. And then at the end, you know, he's great at single stroke rolls. Brr. So we worked out a thing where we were going to jam. We jammed live in the studio, you could see. And watch on the video, Rob goes, now. And so we, we, we just did a visual cue of when we were both going to play fast. And we actually had a lot longer version of the solo and I said it's just too much and so we what we did is we edited out the last version and just hit the last note going wee, wee, wee. but Hurt is really cool it moves dynamically upwards and um, you know when I get my tone you know getting back to that question I use higher action because it doesn't impede my ability to play fast it has nothing to do with speed for me it has to do with tone 
I like, and what I do is this, what I was saying, if you looked at the neck of a guitar like this and the low string was here, I actually have my action like this. I have the higher strings a little higher than the lower so that these ring out and sustain and just like. So I get that, you know, and like. It's very articulate. And, you know, when people say, well, how do you use that much distortion but still get it clean? It's because of my action. And, and see, I like that little bit of higher action on the upper strings. So to complete these two questions real quick, don't get paralyzed by overanalyzing, paralysis through analysis. You see, that's a thing that a lot of people do, and I've done it myself, believe me. I've been there, done that. We call it now the micro zone. Like when you're in recording and you hear this note, one note that's for like a quarter of a second, but you're like, oh, ah, the note's killing me. It's painful, painful. Wah! And so that is the micro zone. And my dad used to say, son, sometimes people can't see the forest through the trees. You want to be in the helicopter looking down on the woods. You don't want to be stuck in the woods with a bunch of leaves in your face and going, where am I, bro? I'm like lost, bro. You need to rise above it. So this is what I can tell you. Just angle it a little bit where it feels comfortable. And the action, that's up to you. If you but if it's too low and your guitar's not set up properly, it's gonna buzz and you're not gonna get a good sound. So I and and I'm one of the guys that from doing clinics, I have done thousands of guitar clinics in 58 countries around the world for almost 30 years of touring the world. One year alone, I was in Europe seven different times. Now, I'm not saying this to be cool. It's my experience. That's why when I talk to you, I'm talking from a lifetime of experience, and I'm trying to give my knowledge of what I've learned through my, my university degree and my degree of rock and roll, living it, breathing it. It's my life, and, and seeing it and, and working it. And so what I learned was that using so many different guitars, the only guitar I brought on tour with me doing clinics is my double. So I'd go into a music store, they would hand me guitars off the wall. And I found when I raised the action, it eliminated all the issues of guitars I've never played before. Like some of them, they didn't care. You know, these are music store guitars. You know, they didn't, and they always complained about things. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought my own tools. I know how to set up the Floyd. I would do a quick just neck tweak and I would raise the action and I would always get a good sound. It doesn't matter if it's an $80 guitar, $100 guitar, but I found that that really, really helped me to, to understand what I do. And, and so hopefully I can impart that to you. Now, um, one last thing I'm going to say. With Sawtooth, these guitars are really reasonably priced, but the wood is beautiful. Um, this uh, T-style configuration, these are just single coils. They sound really cool. I mean, listen. And then the overdrive. So, and it's reasonably priced. It's got binding. It's got beautiful wood. A Wilkinson tuner. A Wilkinson, uh, I'm sorry, a Wilkinson trim, Wilkinson tuners. This is a high-quality guitar. And it's for such a reasonable price. And go to EPS Music, which is part of the Sawtooth Company and Chromacast umbrella of companies. Um, they, on our app, you can go there and buy anything at 20% off. And see, the whole idea of Sawtooth is to make the best instruments possible and make them affordable to you. What's wrong with that? Why We don't want to just steal market share from from Gibson and Ibanez and doing high-end things they're always going to be there what we want to do is make it affordable for more people so I always say it the pie is this big most companies want to steal their slice is only this much they want to steal more more they want to make a bigger slice by stealing from somebody else well yeah I mean that's a good business tactic we like to do that too but the idea is 
make a bigger pie, bro. Make a bigger pie. And so how do you do that? You make great guitars and you make them affordable. And this is a great guitar. This is like, uh, it's like, I, I don't know the exact price, but it's in the $400 range. And this guitar is amazing. I mean, look at this wood. I mean, book matched flame maple. And, and it's so nice. The neck is beautiful. The frets here are really nicely done. The neck is awesome. And so this is what I mean. This is why I love Sawtooth so much. And getting back to this lesson today, Doug Marks from Metal Method is the man when it comes to instructional programs. He's the first. Okay. I was the first one to do the double. You know, people, you know, I, I got a little riled up because in this day and age, you know, a lot of times people try to take away what you've done. And, and I understand that, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, even on my Wikipedia page, they tried to change the name of what I call because a lot of younger guitar players are, are finding ways to play over the neck and they want to call it their own. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But you've got to give credit where credit's due. I invented the double guitar. Steve Vai gave me credit for it. The heart guitar was after mine, not before. And, and so, and I'm really, call it maybe, a, you know, it's my legacy and I want to protect that. And when, I, when it comes to teaching, Doug Marks is the first. And I really, and he's still passionate about it like I am. I'm extremely passionate about talking to you about this because I genuinely want to help. And it helps me. And me. Like I get done with this. I'm like, yeah, yes. And Joey's like, yes, yes, let's rock. And Robert's like, I'm angry. I'm always angry. Can I turn into the Hulk now? And so the idea is very simple. Practice, 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 and paralysis through analysis will kill you. If you strive for perfection, you will never attain it. Native Americans, I know a lot of trivia stuff. Believe me, I'm, my mind is filled. I read two to three hours a day of all sorts of stuff. And I, I love information. The Native Americans in the United States would weave rugs, very detailed rugs, and they would let some mistakes go in because they felt that humans were not capable of perfection, only divine, you know, their gods were capable of that. It's the same way with me. I never strive for perfection. I strive for when I think good is good enough. And that's what you have to do. And if you don't like flip out about what is the angle of the pick? How high are my strings? Are they too low? This is where Frank Zappa said it correctly. Shut up and play your guitar. He was right. There comes a point where quit thinking about that stuff and just play. I've hardly played this guitar at all. In fact, I'm going to say this. This is the first time I've actually really played it since I got it. It was, you know, because it's not my style of playing with these single coil pickups like this, but I love it. It's beautiful. And it's just, and I love the guitar. I would use this to record. I have used sawtooth guitars in a lot of sessions over the last couple of years. It is amazing how great they sound. Listen to Hurt, that acoustic guitar, and I can't say it again because I cannot believe somebody said, well, yeah, dude, it wasn't like the original man or the Johnny Cash where it was all stripped out. One acoustic, one vocal, one bass, one set of drums, two keyboard parts, and then the guitar solo, acoustic guitar, keyboards, one keyboard, and lead and drums and bass. That's it. You can't get more stripped down than what I did in her. You know why it sounds so good? Because everybody played it that good. And the instruments that we used were that good. Sawtooth acoustics are amazing. I could use this guitar. I already know I could. And I, that's why I like the higher action. But remember, with sweep technique, just like anything else, start from the basic. Start from the letter A, then you can get to Z. What happens with too many people they start from the letter K or F or M or, you know, Q. And then when you, you hit a wall because you don't have the ground level, it's almost like, you know, Tom Brady just, just retired. But when you analyze the way he threw at American football for the European and, you know, people outside the United States that might not understand our football, they would analyze the way he threw a ball. And there are certain, the way he would pivot off his foot. These are fundamentals that he had that were so correct. See, that's what I have on guitar. My fundamentals are so good 
that it enables me to, to carry over this decades. And that's the, the, the gift that I can give to you is that if you do it right from the ground level up, you're going to have your skill your whole life. What's wrong with that? And if people don't want to listen, fine, don't listen. Doesn't hurt me. I'm still here. You know, I just released a video six days ago, and I got another one coming out. It doesn't matter. I've got a tour, and, and uh, we've got a really big tour of Europe coming up. I'm just hoping that it happens. I've had three, two, and two is middle four minus one. I've had three tours postponed and canceled because of COVID. It's, it's about 140 shows that I've had to cancel. We have, we're looking on March 25th, I started in Italy, and we're even looking at England now that England's opened up. So, and I haven't been there for a while either. So it's going to be really fun. We're going to announce the tour date soon, and I'm going to play songs from my latest album, More Machine Than Man. I've even got the tracks for Hurt, just in case, and because some people have been requesting that. But I can say this, Speed Kills works. If you start from the ground up, you're building a house. You, or you're building a structure, you start from the ground and build it up. That's my whole methodology in a nutshell. Take that arpeggio, do it slow. Slow with your picking hand. Angle your pick, doesn't matter how much. Doesn't matter, don't be so extreme where it's like perpendicular to your guitar. Strings, you don't want this. Anywhere in there is fine. Don't, over, don't overthink it. And string action, you know, the height of the strings, I do it a unique way. I don't really care what people say. Look at, you know, in the era of Dimebag, who was my friend, he scooped his mid. So I used to call it the smiley face EQ. And then I used to say, I have the exact opposite. I have the frown EQ. What are all these young players doing now? The EQ that I talked about. Because I didn't worry about what Dime did. Dime was Dime. My tribute to Dime was my unique take on his music, just like I do all tributes. But I never subscribed to that mid-sloped sound. I never liked it. Too much low end, too much high end for me, not for Dime. So I took an opposite approach. Less bass, less highs, more mids. Uh, a lot of young guitar players, what are they doing today? Less bass, less highs, more mids. Why? I was right the first time. And if you want that really creamy and thick lead sound that can just tear it up, go my way. And, and uh, so anyway, I'd like to say this. I, this has been a long one tonight because I felt it was really important. Um, Sawtooth is a great company. Uh, this guitar, this Transmos Burst with the T-style pickups, it's amazing. And for the price, and like I said, I forgot. I forgot to put the Wang Bar in because it's not a locking trim. So I wasn't thinking about it. So it's my mistake. But I own up to it, you know. I actually look in the mirror and say, are you the one that caused this to go right or go wrong? You know, and that's a, that's a hard thing for some people to do sometimes. It's easy to blame everybody else and everything. You know, take responsibility for yourself. So remember, play that chord. Just play it simple. And make it happen. Play it with conviction. And add an extra note or two. When you can get that, you're on your way to becoming a sweet picking master. And remember, if you get anything out of this lesson today, paralysis through analysis. Do not overanalyze. Good, find a place where good is good enough. Don't worry about extreme, you know, you don't want extreme angles on the pick, but you want a little bit of an angle to create shift, to create that percussive sound that's the first part of a note. Remember, the note, the attack, the sustain, the, then you have the release of it and the decay. So this is the way tone works. It doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, but you have this attack, sustain, then you have the, the release of the attack and the decay. And so that's the way music, musical tones work. So don't worry so much about the angle or don't worry so much about the action play what's comfortable for you but i can tell you this if it's too low and your guitar's not set up right you're going to get a lot of fret buzzing it's not going to sound that good it's not and that's what i learned a long time ago especially on the upper strings you know when you're playing really high and you go <laughs> Oh, 
when you play that high and your action's too low, it sounds terrible. It's like, <laughs> but when you raise it a little bit, the notes tend to start to ring out. And that's why my notes ring out. Anyway, I want to say this. Um, get my metal method programs. Doug Marks made great programs. We have updated the shopping cart on the metal method site. Not only, and I, I have to say this, DVDs, you know, we still sell them, but there's such a low percentage of the, of the, of the, you know, lesson sales that really they're going to be phased out very soon. And, but what we do have now is live streaming of the lessons and the, and the fidelity is amazing of our programs, but Doug has some excellent programs. He's the man. I, all my instructional uh, programs are available through Metal Method. So if you want the true details of it and all the tab, they're there. Also, Sawtooth Rules. What can I say? Hurt is getting a lot of press right now. Ultimate Guitar, um, Music Radar. They're, they're, it's starting to generate a lot of momentum. It's a very heartfelt version of this. And what I what I did at the end, if somebody says something about the solo at the end, let me tell you my my thought process. Um, when you hear the words, they're really sad. And I'm not a druggie, so you know the needle tears a hole. You know I don't know that old familiar sting. You know try to kill it all the way. I don't know about killing that, but I do know about killing feelings like of my parents dying of my sister dying, of people around me that are gone, that were there, of things, you know, I've lived a whole life already, and I've got a lot more to go, but I've, I've seen, I've, I've lived 10 lifetimes, so hurt resonated in that, but, but also at the very end of the song, it goes, I will find a way, and when I said, I'll find a way, we kicked into the solo, because you know what, the way I found doesn't hurt anymore. That's what I did in that solo. And when you listen to it, there's breaks. There, the solo is awesome because it's it's melodic, it's feeling. And then Rob and I watch. If you watch it closely, he's like, he gives me the cue. Like, and you watch him go, now. That was live in the studio. We did a lot. There's no tricks, no gimmicks. You don't hear massive pitch correction on my voice. That's my voice. You've heard me sing here. Um, we made it real. And if anybody says it's overproduced, one acoustic, one bass, one vocal, one set of drums, two keyboard parts, and at the end, one keyboard part, acoustic, bass, and drums, and a lead. That's overproduced. It's not overproduced. It was played right. That's the secret. Anyway, I'm Michelangelo Obedio. Thank you so much for being here tonight. See ya.